because I'm not saying that they don't have a right to say anything, but I think you cannot, you know, people come to me straight ahead and say, okay, listen, why, why do you do this? Why? I mean, I have a lot of people coming and asking me stuff, and then I can explain, and then, oh, okay, you know, then, but this, when people just attack you without saying anything, or like to see like two minutes of the video, or they, like also, like people that do this, they also do it for motive. This video was also obviously done not just for the Peace Corps, it was also done to make money. They have a paying side. They, they modified the video apparently quite good so that it would fit their needs. It's all good. Okay, all do. But what I think is important is that you don't judge someone from one photo or a two minutes clip. Go to the shows, watch me ride. Like people come up and say, God, you're nothing like what I thought you would be. And for me personally, I don't really go and look at it. You know, people write so much shit on the internet, so it's like, I, I, I go and look at the positive things, I go and train my horses, I do my work, and I know that my horses are having a good time, and I know that I'm a good rider in my capability of what I'm doing, and that's what's important to me, not the rest. If I would look at that every day, I would probably go and shoot myself, so it's better just to ride and be happy, and you know, i always been quite a happy chap, so. But, <laughs> but okay, I get that. Um, but what, inside, it must hurt the judgment that you don't like or you don't love your horses like other people do. And that you, you mentioned that they come to you because you're a professional and then in the end you, you sell horses. So what about the judgment that you don't love your horses uh, and you, you are only riding these horses to, to make money to... to it would be easy like that because if I didn't love them and if I didn't take care of my horses, they would also not do what they do, which would in that means lead that I don't can I cannot sell them. I would not take a medal. You know, I mean, I don't think by treating horses bad you will get success. To be really honest, I mean, people say, oh, you can always pull them down. You know, you can always argument everything you want to argument. But for me personally, I know that if you are like don't treat your horses in a good way, they will not go in the ring and they will not do it, and you will also not be able to sell them, which I do obviously quite okay because I started with nothing. So um, I think that people, instead of speaking out loud and quick, should take a bit of a think and then go and watch us instead, and then make a judgment over that and then do it in a personal way, like to you. Like out, let's say in Odense for that example, it was like five years in there. He hasn't done a show in the European. He was really hot as hell. If I don't like try it some way for a couple of minutes to make him just calm down, relax, then he kicks me off. Okay, that, that that's exactly where I, what I was trying to get to because some people might say that you know, okay, you have your conviction and your belief in your training system, like everybody does, and and very passionate about it. Um, but that you also know that, that it is quite controversial, that there's plenty of people out there that don't like it, and yet you choose to do that. And some people might say, are you very trusting? Are you very naive? Is it a surprise that then people take photographs or videos? I think, um, like I said, Scandic is a very special horse. I ride every horse different. And you will see, like, from, from every horse, it's a different system to ride. I'm not, like, riding one horse. I don't do an X to F way of riding the horses. I ride, and there's a feel need. If you need to make them a little bit shorter for, for a couple of minutes, I don't think this is a big deal. If you need to make them longer for a couple of minutes, you make them longer. If you need to make them higher, you make them higher. It depends on the horse. And, but to think that I sit and ride my horses deep for two hours, that's a real big joke. Wrong assumption. Yeah, very wrong assumption. And. Uh, uh, this will, I mean, everyone who's seen me ride knows that this is also not true, so it's not a problem for me. At the Olympics, I think it was blow below belt, he would jump away, he went short for a couple, like say a minute, and then, of course, someone took a couple of photos, and then it's like, oh, the Lord command is back again, you know. Um, I don't really, you know, I think when you ride, you have to do it with feeling, not with your horse, and if you don't, you can see on the horse if they, if they do it or not do it. And if you have a horse like, say, Scandic is the most, the horse is most spoken about, but it's also the most difficult horse I ever had. Okay, what do I do? Do I try to work with this horse, or do I just say, oh shit it? And then I would never have taken a medal, I would never have done what I've done with him, or with any other horse, because when I started with horses, people said to me, oh this one will never be anything, and this one will never be anything, and still I made him to do Grand Prix, and still, we, you know, we did good shows. I mean, you have to give the horse and yourself a bit of, you know, time, and, you know, look where you can end. 
And then, can you go to sleep at night and be sure in your heart as a horseman that these are happy athletes? I mean, I cannot talk to them, but I'm pretty sure, yes. I mean, you can see on them. You, if, you've been in the, if you've been with horses enough, you see on the horses. You go through the stable, you watch your horses, you see if they come to you. You, you know, it's, it's, I'm convinced that you cannot make a horse do something like this beautiful if you just force them to do it. You have to work with them, otherwise you're not getting where you are. No rider in the world will get there by forcing the horses to do it. Um, that's my belief. Okay, well, I, I, I'm sorry to bring that up, but for most it's of fine. us, you know, I think everybody's very vulnerable, actually. And I, I, I mean, I don't mean just top riders. I mean, you know, with, with the internet now, where we had this discussion the other day, you know, your next door neighbor might decide to start something about completely unfounded or a wrong assumption, on, you know, on Facebook. This is in your stable and try to sell the top horses, and this is a mare. She's eight years old. I had her now for a year. She went as a six-year-old in the Young Horse Grand Prix. Uh, young Horse Grand Prix, I say, in the Young Horses World well, Equestrian, and was good in the first class. And then the second class, she was a little bit uh, missing the changes. So there was, uh, I think she finished eight or something like that. But she has a very good similarity with the dad because I took the dad up to Grand Prix as well, Silvano, and. She's the same type, very light to ride, very nice in the hand and in contact. And of course, if you have a horse like this, it's also much easier than to do the riding. You have different horses, some are strong, some are soft, some are slow. But for me as a professional, I have to work with what I've got. And, you know, sure, in a, in a super world, I would have, you know, only like Vallegros in the stable. I would love to have that, but that's not the way it is. So. I have to then work with what I have, and I take the horses and then I try them. Normally I make with my clients like for a month, they, so that you know after a month everyone can see if they are happy with the way I ride the horses, and if I think that I have a connection with the horse, and if that all goes well then um, you know I start riding them, maybe compete them a couple of times and then they, they get sold. And it's the same thing with this mare. Um, I took her out to a show which she won at St. George, with quite high percentage. Uh, she's still a bit green, but she has a lovely talent for everything. And uh, then I have a client and she will go to the vet check next week. So what I'm going to do is when I then warm them up, and this I actually do with all the horses. Some people may not believe me, but it's actually true. I start in a quite slow trot. And like Adelinda already said yesterday about speed control and half hold and stuff, it's, I mean, the system is a little bit the same with me. Oh, you're already here. My wife is eager to come in. <laughs> um, what you do is that you, I just want them when I start so that I can take them everywhere I want to. Like they can go around, they can watch everything. Could you wait a couple of minutes, sweetie? Can you wait a couple of minutes before? You're a bit early. I, I think the answer to that is no. <laughs> so, um, what I want to be able to do is that I want to be able, maybe a little bit more, like you see often people ride low when they start, but I also would like almost to have them like really like, like really long as well. It's actually... Because, I mean, I have to say, I'm very impressed with her. She came in here, they took these things away, and she didn't even look. And you have sometimes more lucky horses, you have sometimes uh, horses that are less lucky. For me, it's a lot about, like, as well as many others says, about the variation of the horse. When I give it a little leg, I want it to go forward. And this is like, I think today, the training, we all come to the point when we want the horses are getting more electrified, like electric the horses, and we all want to ride them with less and less strength. I think when I started riding my first horses, they were quite like chunky horses, and you know, people like that. But now people doesn't like to sweat anymore, and I notice as well with the clients that I have, they don't really like to sweat. If they, the horses are a bit heavy, they say, oh, this is too much for me. So what I try to, when I get the horses for the selling, is I try to have horses that are light for the aids. 
And my job is to make the horse so nice so that other people can ride it. My job is not to make it perfect for myself, at least not if I want to sell it, because that's what I live on. So I try to give the horse a nice feeling so when the people come and they ride, they say it's a nice horse and you know we'd like to buy it. So when I normally start with them, I always do like this. For They go in my stable 20 minutes walking, and the first people ask, oh, do you have a walker? And I say, I have a lot of walkers from Sweden. <laughs> and they walk them for 20 minutes outside so that they are nicely warm. And then I do this job for about 15 minutes to warm up face. Like normally, like, I also do this in the canter tour, like quite long and low. But she has a very big canter, so with this one I do it a little bit differently. I do the canter with a little bit higher neck. But this is also like, like, like I said in the interview with Richard, that it's also very different from different horses. You know, one horse you may need to ride a bit lower, one horse you may need to ride a bit higher. But it's always, you know, the horse has to decide for you, I think, a little bit what you want to do. I cannot do the same thing with every horse. And I like, when I ride, to have a nice feeling of both reins. Like when I started doing dressage, they always said, you have to have a contact on the outside and the inside has to be really loose. And I am actually like to have a nice contact on both reins. So that I can, like maybe also in between, like bend maybe a little bit to the outside and keep the outside shoulder in. And just make sure that that I have the horse as straight as it gets. And for me it's like, you know, I'm, I haven't invented my system. People ask me about my system. And I can very honestly say oh, that I'm a thief. I've stolen everything. Everything I do in my riding has stolen from everyone. A lot of people sitting here. When I was little, I used to go to the show and I used to put myself in a straw bale and I used to watch every single rider. And I used to love it. I could sit there for hours and hours and hours watching everyone ride. And then I used to go home and I used to like, you know, try. And then I started training with different trainers and I have from every trainer I've been with, I have something in my system. So what I do is nothing that I invented or I put my own feeling to it because I'm me. I, I do my my feeling from what I feel, but everything that we do as a writing is in, it's, it's what I've learned. And some of the people that when I was a kid are still in the big in the business. And I can still hear, you know, I can do a 3 plus 1, which I learned with Kura when you take 3 reins in 1 and 1, or Rebhan used to do like the La Phillies when you hold like this, and it's, you know, you have a lot of things that you learn through the years, which is really cool. And, you know, you try it and then you feel does it work? Does it work for you? And every, every trainer has really taught me something. And that's what I think, you know, today people are so negative. We have such a great sport and we have great people, but they're like people are screaming so quickly about something instead of actually, you know, trying to discuss it like we do here, or trying to get to a good solution about problems. They only just start rambling it out in the press or somewhere else. And I think it's much more important that you discuss stuff. And that you, because when I was a kid, and I still am, I always try to see things with the positive side. I want, I want the best. I want to be happy. I want to ride and I want to, you know, one day you win, the next day another person win. Oh. This is the way it goes for me. I don't want to win because someone else is worse. I want to win because I got a bit better. So, um, like you see with this horse, she has quite a big canter. So that's why I cannot, if I, I can do it one time, I can leave her a little bit longer. But you will see, okay, now it's actually not so bad. But if you leave her too long, the canter will also a little bit fall apart. So that, you see here a little bit, you see a little bit the difficulty that I get in the canter. So then I choose maybe not to do that too often, or I maybe do this only for a short period of time, and then take it back. To do that 
too often, or I maybe do this only for a short period of time, and then take it back. Because I already see now, I already have a little bit of a problem getting it back. But this is stuff that I have to, that I have to feel when I ride. So when I try horses, I like to see the ability for them to collect. And when you see with this one, this is actually exactly the same as with the father. She is really easy to collect. And you can sit here, and you can pirouette her, and she's just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Now I miss that diet coke. <laughs> so it's like, you know, every horse has strength, and every horse has weaknesses, and for me, when I want to train them and sell the, the really good horses, it's a lot about finding the, the strengths in them. Uh, oh, that was a bad change from my side. This is something, you know, when people... I read one time on Eurodressage, Astrid commenting on my seating in the change, which she has really, really... Oh, it's different really, really right about, I sit like shit in my changes. <laughs> and, you know, that's... Okay, that is something you... Uh, when you train a lot of different horses, you have some horses that are easy with the changes, and you have some horses that are difficult. So, you see, this is when you have a wife that's always in the way. <laughs> and when you... When you train at home, I don't mind. I actually, you know, when Astrid rode that, I went home and I rode two days without the stirrups. And, you know, now at home at least I get it a little bit better, but then I come to somewhere on a show or somewhere when I'm a little bit nervous myself, and then you're a little bit, you get, uh, you get a little bit, uh, you lose a bit of the confidence and then you make mistake again. But that's what I want to come to when, like, this has nothing to do with training or selling a top horse, but when I read somewhere, like, a, a good criticism, then I try to, you know, change and make myself better. I don't say, damn, Astrid, why did you write that I sat like shit in the changes? I said, oh, look at the video. God, I sat like shit in the changes. And then I try to get better. And I think this is the way we should approach the sport instead of just criticizing. We should try to make our sport better and you know, take it in a positive way. So, like this is, I really like this horse because she's really sensitive. And like I said, after I had Donna Meek, which I think is one of the world's best horses, I said, okay, I'm going to start riding mares as well. And that makes the market a bit better because if you only want to ride the Geldings or the Stallions, you don't have the whole market. But now I actually said there are so many good mares out there, so I started a bit with that. And when I like, when I train them, I like, you know, when I come with the leg, nah, I like it to go forward. This is as well as Adelinda said, and what probably a lot of people have said on the Global Forum. But then in the end it comes down to the, like, the quality of the horse. I don't like, a lot of people I see come to me, to train or do something, and to ride with a whip. I mean, I'm not a whip rider. I don't. If I need a whip, I take a whip, but then it needs to be <coughs> to, to ensure the horse that it's, you know, like going more forward, or it's something, you know, that you help the horse with. And if I don't need it, I also don't want it. But I want to be able to, like, control my horse. When I started riding, I was riding a lot in like a little bit of a balance trot. Then I learned that that was not so good. So now I like trying to have a little bit of a bit of a quicker trot. But like, okay, with a horse like this, it's also then easy because here you can, you know, you can put your hand still, you can sit still. She's really swinging in the body. You can take it back. You can go a bit forward. Something as well that I learned in the Dutch system is that I don't click so much. Actually, Kura said it to me the first time, or Richard White, that a lot of people are... But it goes like this all the time. And what I think, and I really kept on that, is that if I want to do 
like a clicking system. I want, you know, more lead when the Grand Prix horses, and I will show this one a little bit in the hand in a moment. I want the clicking for the Piaf Passage. For me. And I like, when I train them, I like, it when I come with the leg nav, I like it to go forward. This is as well as Adelinda said, and what probably a lot of people have said on the Global Forum. But then in the end it comes down to the, like, the quality of the horse. I don't like a lot of people I see come to me to train or do something and they ride with a whip. I mean, I'm not a whip rider. I don't, if I need a whip, I take a whip, but then it needs to be <coughs> to, to ensure the horse that it's, you know, like going all forward or it's something, you know, that you help the horse with. And if I don't need it, I also don't want it. <laughs> but I want to be able to, like, control my horse. When I started riding, I was riding a lot in like a little bit of a balance trot. And then I learned that that was not so good. So now I like trying to have a little bit of a bit of a quicker trot. But like, okay, with a horse like this, it's also then easy because here yeah, you can, you know, you can put your hand still, you can sit still. She's really swinging in the body. You can take it back. You can go a bit forward. Something as well that I learned in the Dutch system is that I don't click so much. <laughs> Actually, Kura said it to me the first time, or Richard White, that a lot of people are... But it goes like this all the time. And what I think, and I really kept on that, is that if I want to do like a clicking system, I want, you know, more lead when the Grand Prix horses, and I will show this one a little bit in the hand in a moment, I want the clicking for the Piaf Passage, for me. But you know, when I tried on the horse for, for keeping it for the, for training or something, I really like this one because she's, because she's really sensitive, but she's really like soft. And it's so funny when you're ridden the father, that you can, really tell it's a lot of the father in this one as well. You know, this is the thing with horses. If they want to work, they work with you. You cannot, at least that's my opinion, you cannot force a horse to work for you. I don't think, at least not with getting a good result out in the end. And we all want the so-called happy athlete. But so, and I just like, as much of my daily training as well, I just like to, when I come with the leg, it goes forward. So it's quite like, it's not so difficult, you know, it's, people make, when I started dressage, the first thing people said to me was that, dressage is so difficult. And you're like, yes, it is difficult. But if we think it's difficult, it's not going to be easier. So, I just try to, you know, for me, make it as, as easy as I can. And God knows I'm not an expert. So, but, ah. but you see like this, it's, you know, this one, I think now for me, oh shit, I should not have sold this one, I want to keep this one. But, this is also not, ah. and then, and I think this is the side that people who has an opinion sometimes about me doesn't see or doesn't want to see. <laughs> but, uh, so when I try this one like this, I would say, okay, I like this one. I would definitely train this one. But, uh, and also something with the walk. There's also something like a couple of years ago, you could have a bad walk on the horse. And now you have to have also a good walk. The horses has become so good that you can only win if you really have a super horse, huh? That's, uh, I mean, everyone rides so well now, it's not about the riding, it's like, I found it really interesting yesterday with Adelinde, like the, the, the athlete, like the, the mental and the physical part. This is what we need to work with, I think, you know, we need to get even better on ourselves, because technical-wise, I think everyone in the top nowadays ride really, really well. 
No. Okay, we, we have finished with that one? Yeah, I'm going to do a little bit, PF. You're not done yet. Okay. <laughs> I just thought it would be a, a good moment to, for the formerly welcome Lindor because we haven't oh, really said hello. That you can do in between so, time. <laughs> are you safe if we applaud? Uh, hang on to that horse, Patrick. Um, you check my wife, she's good in the sand. And if you cannot laugh, then you have, like Tristan did a really interesting yesterday, to see, you know, you can. You can really do a lot with the horses, it's only what we make them, I think, is that. So when I start with the piaffi, I, mean, I want to click a bit. And the only thing I want to see when, when they're this young, is brav, that, that they just do a little bit of... Like this, a little bit of baby stepping. And then I know that if I'm, when I'm gonna... Brav, this I also, this is something I learned when I was at Kura's place. Ah. Ah. Super, good. And I do this with like almost every horse, every day a little bit. And I try then, first I help them a bit with the whip, and then I just only try to click. And then when, when, when I've done this, I try them to put on my girl, on Marlene, my garage, she's a really good girl. And then I do the same thing from the top. And here I let the horse a little bit decide for me when he wants to put the neck. So if it want to take its neck down, I let it take its neck down, as long as it doesn't pull me down. And then, you know, it's a little bit like the baby. Super. That, because... Brav. And I only do it a little bit every day. But then you can actually see after a couple of weeks that which horses you will be able to produce and which horses that is will be more difficult. And you know, this is, this is really easy. Kura told me this a, like a couple of years ago. So that's how I started doing it because I said, hmm, this is a good idea. If she does it, then I want to do it as well. Brav. So that's, the, that's a little bit just basic about, I think, for me to tell you about like, you know, going forward and leg and stuff. I mean, this is stuff that everyone has tell you, I think at least, what, what time to need. And it's, of course, when you do, a sales horse, you do more like lessons and you need to learn something. When you have a training person, you train more to compete or do what you, what you want to do at the show ring. So it's a little bit different riding, obviously. But what I would really like is that to see the horses that you've sold again at the shows. And uh, I think for me it's always difficult when I go somewhere and I watch a horse. Like, also like Inga said before, you know, you, you ride a horse one time, but you don't really know how it is. You have no really idea. But when you have the horses at home, and you're able to ride them, and you can feel them, it's a total different, you know, you know which client would fit to the horse. It's a total different, the, the prospect will be much more um, fitting. It will be much more like, okay, this rider needs this type of horse, because not every rider can, can ride a Scandic or a, or a Sandra Boy or the day that I had before. It's like every, every rider needs its own horse and I think the most important thing is to match the rider and the horse. And this, Linda's uh, competed this one successfully. She did the Olympics. That was her really big dream and she was really enthusiastic when she got there and she did a really good job. And then we castrated it because it was a stallion before and the reason we castrated it was not because it was naughty was because he was so well endowed that when he was piaffing he could not physically use his left hind leg without clonking himself. So um, we thought this was not so much horse welfare so we took them off. Um, and since then he's been really going from, from better to even better and she was in Hungary for a couple of weeks ago and won the World Cup and uh, the freestyle in the Grand Prix with the highest scores in Australian history which was really cool.
And um, I like, you know, to take her here and show a little bit because this is the part I really enjoy. When you see a horse that you sold going really well, I mean, I don't, you know, it doesn't fit every time. I cannot guarantee that it will fit, but it's, you know, you have a responsibility also to, to, to the clients. If you don't think it fits, then you have to like also maybe sometimes tell the client that this is not the horse for you. Even if you think, shit, that money would have been good, but you will sell them maybe another horse, or they will come by and buy five horses from you in the future. I think this is more important than to sell at any costs. I have never done that, and I will hopefully never have to start with that either. Good sweetie. Look very relaxed. I have to say, my wife has also the better competition nerve. I'm like a shaky leaf when I'm starting, but she's very cool. So it's, uh, I'm really impressed with her mentality, like her, when she, when she goes into ring, she's really focused. We did the qualification in Mannheim, it was the first Australian qualification, and Dr. Kleber was sitting at sea, and it was raining so much that he was like drenched and sitting with a jacket over his head, and she went in and did like 71 in the Grand Prix, I mean, very cool. Enough? Uh, Patrick, what do you call good stuff. <laughs> Patrick, can we, can we just get something clear? Because yeah. some of us are wondering. Can, can you just take Patrick's mic down so he can't actually speak for a minute? Oh. Little, can I come and ask you something? Because a few of us are wondering this. Um, this is a little bit like his and hers, you know? Have you forgiven him yet for making you walk around London in very high heels? We need to know. I'm a girl, I can do that way. If I sleep, it's no problem. Have a heels, a girl. You can ride a horse. You got to wear heels too, honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so he, he's. Uh, and, and by the way, are you a fan of James Bond, or did he tell you he was taking you for a romantic uh, couple of days in London, and then he told yeah, you going to James Bond? Talking the phone. It's like those hours are for me the most important <laughs> day on work. My customers expect me to ride professionally, and that's why I then. For those seven, eight hours when I sit in the saddle, I do my job. Afterwards, I can phone and SMS and whatever, but uh, you have to really make sure that when you are on the horse, you, you, horse, you focus a lot, because for me at least, which I'm, I'm not a natural talent, I was never a natural talent, but I worked my way up. And I, I learned and I was open to learning, and I think that's how I became what I am today, not because I I had the background or money or something else. It's not that they don't work hard, the ones who has all of that, but for me it was different. So I have to be extra focused on what I'm doing when I'm riding. Good. So when we start, it's like she warms him up exactly the same way as I warm every other horse up in a really slow trot. I discovered, at least for myself, that if you, when I was little, I was always trying to make the big trot at once. And I think that that takes too much on the legs. Uh, I always do really, really like a, a small trot. And if the clients that comes to my barn can't accept that, then they have to go somewhere else because I will take that time. Um, good. And then we start working and then I start as with the other ones. I do transitions back and forth. Okay, this one is also like, you know, it's a really nice horse and it has a very good rhythm. But I realized someone told me one day that I was good at teaching them PF Passage. And I think that my first thought has really easy to do PF Passage. So I, I learned PF Passage from that one, which that also had really difficulties with the changes. And that's why I also have a little bit of problems with my changes myself. Um, good. Start doing a little bit like shoulder in and stuff, honey, huh? Like normal, like at home. Tempo, a little bit more forward. What for me it's important is that I can variate the horse but still keep the same rhythm. We talk about this, you know, rhythm, rhythm, takt, losgelassenheit in the German Scala des Ausbildung. Uh, and I agree totally with that, but there are many ways to get to everything. And uh, I want to be a good, I want to be able, this one is really good at it, I want to be able to change the trot register so that it's everything in one rhythm. No matter if you do extended trot, half passes, piaf passage, you see sometimes so you could have prepared it a bit better. Good. It was a little bit like the end was not so good, huh? You, you should have done a little bit more shoulder in, a bit more, more bending. Uh, when, when I see, sometimes you see horses, they do like one PF and one Passage. And some people say that's really classical and great. I don't really... I like it more when the horses are in one rhythm. They go Passage, 
They go in, they should also sit, but they go in one rhythm all the time. I think for me that looks nicer, but it's, it's you know, everyone is a bit different. Good, a little bit more forward. Good, and of course now here we have, this is very good. Keep the rhythm. Okay. And also think that is you don't have 60 meters, huh? This is also sometimes when you go to warm-up arenas and the, the arena is not 60 meters, you have to be sure that you don't do them too steep because it's a different steepness. Good. A bit quicker behind. So for me it's always about, yes, good. To get the reaction in it, like, you know, to get... When I come with the leg, I want him to stay a bit in the front and get quicker behind. Come, a bit more, a bit more. I mean, this is not bad, but I think, you know, sometimes you can do a little bit more even. Do one down here, like to this side, and then really go forward, huh? Yeah. Prepare him, shoulder, and then go, like really go, come, come, come. So, so, good, very good. You can always like variate a lot of stuff. Yeah, good so. Good so, super, super. Keep the, still your hands. Like I also said, like a lot of people like to like do right, left, right, left. I like to have uh, both hands still. I always try to get those into the hand, from hind legs into the hand. Good. And this is something I work good. You're much better with your hands now. Like we had, like Mr. Makovsky said in, in Poland, that little put her hands down, like this. And then we've been training to put the hands up. I mean, we do read the sheets. You know, even if some judges sometimes think we don't, but I actually read every each and every one of them. And I try to see what they want me to improve. That's how I get better, hopefully. Uh, good. Really good. Good. And go. Well, we've also been like a little bit... Good. Okay. One more time. Don't let him drop too much. Like, you can have him a bit shorter, but don't let him drop too bit. This is also the difference between riding a horse a bit shorter in the neck or a horse dropping behind a bit. This is, a, you know, something that is, I think is totally different. You need to contact. Don't push too much with your hand. Good. Still with your hand. Still with your hand. That's better. And back. Still down your hands a little bit. Together. And watch you don't do this pulling thing, huh? Still with your hand. So, you need to make sure that, you know, that, good, stay with your hand. Also when it pulls a bit, like, keep the hand still and ride it into the hand instead. You know, some people say, you know, you pull a bit right and left and then the horse gets softer, but I think that's not the real the softness. I want it to go into the softness. And you have horses, it's the same here, you have horses that's easier to do it, and you have horses that are more difficult. And for me as a... As an educator or a professional rider, I, I don't choose. I ride what I can. Good. Very good, huh? What's also important, what we do a lot as well, is, I mean, walking a lot. I mean, every, I think everyone in the top sport today does this as well. Because you have it in the test, you, you have to walk a lot. So it's, uh, I think this is something you train. Of course, if you have like a horse like this, has a very, very good walk, it's easier, but I, God knows how many hours I spent trying to get Scandic to walk in a proper way. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, some horses have easier, some horses have more difficult. And I think for me as well, when I, when, when I take them, I try to imagine what they will look when they are finished. And uh, I think this is something that today a little bit of people have forgotten. We have, we compare the horses to like a Totalas or a Vallegro, which is great, but you know, we have to get there as well. I don't think that they were the perfect horses when they started. Good. You want to do a little bit of canter before? <laughs> I like that. She never says that at home. Yes, boss. <laughs> Good. Keep him a little bit more collected. A little bit of a half fault. We also call him Sandra Shit at home because I have no horse in the stable that shits so much as this one. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. Also what's really important, which I think I've been much more aware of in the last couple of years, is not to use the leg too much. You give it like a, like a leg and then it goes until you give it another leg. So I think a lot of people using the leg a lot, and this is something that has become much better in any country and in any training, that we use much less leg than they used to. If I watch videos, from, from all the times, you can really see that they are like holding on with the leg. And, but nowadays the horses are so electric, so we don't really need to use so much legs. 
Good. Really good. And then a little bit more forward again in between. Good. And it's the same thing here. You must be able to change him all the time. This is what I, I do with all my horses. I want to change them. Forwards, backwards, up, down, long, short. You know, it has to be able to like really quickly do different things. And like with any horse that I ride, I try to do different things. And also with the horses that I have, and like every Grand Prix that I have at home are different. Some needs to do more basic work, some needs to do, train the Piaf. I mean, they all come to me not because they are perfect, they come to me because they have a problem. They would not pay 2,000 euros a month if they were perfect. No one does that. Good shoulder, good forehand, good, and go. A little bit more. Good. This is also something, you know, you can, you can do different... Ah, good, so keep the balance. Don't let him go too much like on the hand. Make him a little bit up, a little bit shorter then. So, this is better. Good, straight, shoulder to the right. It's really important for me is that he's really straight. That it goes like to corners and stuff straight. And this is also something you, I mean, you work on it every day. Good, really good. Shoulder, super. I think I learned more through the years that the preparation for the different stuff is more important than the stuff itself. When I was, it lost a bit of the canter there in the corner, huh? Um, when, when I was younger, I thought, you know, I don't know, the first Grand Prix I rode, I will never forget that. I thought, what is everybody yakking about? Grand Prix riding is so easy. But, you know, the more you do it, the better you want to get, and then the more hard it gets. And, uh, you know, it's like, you have to really, like, with different types of horses you work with, and the more, good. Oh, you did a me. So, that's better. Do it again. But, I mean, that also can happen. I think it's like, for me, it's important that when I have students, for example, they're like embarrassed to make mistakes, but I think it's good that we make mistakes, because if we make mistakes, we can actually get better. Very good. And I mean, that's what I also say when people are, like, you know, asking me sometimes, I mean, I'm not a world expert. I do mistakes, everyone does. And I think, you know, as long as we're willing to work with our faults and to try to, like, improve, good. Then it's really much better, good. Super. Really good, honey, huh? You want to do a couple of ones? You just watch the corner again, huh? You did the, the two, so then the corner was like... Mm. Make sure you keep the details about the corners, the preparation and stuff. Shoulder. This is good with her because, you know, like, when you teach her, you can be very honest. I think, I mean, this is the person I trust most in the world. I can be really, like, blunt honest to her, and she can be blunt honest to me. A bit more forward now. Come. Very good. God, I wish I could do that. <laughs> do let him walk a bit, huh? Oh, do a little bit of walk. Oh, the transition to trot first. Oh, oh, boys. Good. Good. I use a couple of commanders. I use ho to get slower. I use pru to stop. Then I do two clickings. One for Pierre von Passage. And this is nothing I've learned. This I've learned from Chef. This is, I mean, I didn't find that up. He said that to me, and I thought that was a good idea, so I took it. It's um, good. Well, it's very good ones, huh? It's, uh, it's too easy to train this one, almost. Good. No, but it's like, you know, then it makes fun to train. But then it's also make fun when you, when you see the horses go, when it is like this. And I think... A little bit quicker before. Leg, leg, again. A bit quicker, leg. This is also forward, forward. A little bit more. So. Good. And again, look, if it starts with the leg. Yeah, good. You also, like, sometimes you also have to give a correction with the leg. But, then he has to go. I'd rather give it one than to have it, like, squeeze, squeeze, and squeeze for half an hour. That makes me really slow. Good. A little bit more through the neck. Also make sure that you go a little bit when you turn to slow behind. So make it a little bit shorter first. Same rhythm. I would have also started a bit from the trot. Good, that's better. Now you're getting there. Good, this is better. Yeah, that's much better. For me it's important when I do the 
the, the rhythm in the Piaf Passage is to always good, to always keep the same rhythm, to have the good, to have the rhythm in it, good, good, and out, good. If you see with this one, when I taught this one Piaf Passage, I wanted to have a quicker Piaf when I started, but then that didn't work out so well, so I taught him to try to do a little bit slower, but like in the rhythm, do it again, so that you have it like in the rhythm. Difficult here. And when I piaf them, I like to piaf them a little bit. Ah, that's a good one. I like to piaf a bit forward with the horses. Good. Okay, trot out. There you lost a bit in the trot again. It's important, like with this one, you can see as well that he has learned the basic stuff, like the, the half passes, the trot and stuff, longer ago. And the piaf passage is quite new. And you can see it, it takes. Good, this is good. It takes a couple of years to, to make them strong enough, so when I have a horse, I always immediately try to start doing a bit with the Piaf Passage. Because I, I think that's the most important thing. We, if we don't have a horse that do Piaf Passage, we will never go Grand Prix. And good. A bit quicker. A little bit lower in the neck. Keep them a little bit more together in the neck. Good. That, yeah, no right left. Still the hand, push him into the hand instead. Little, nah, a little bit more forward first. Don't try to do the PF if you're not really having the, the passage forward, huh? So, I want to be able to change the passage here. Good. That's better. So, then, that's better. That's better. That's the better one. Good. And up. And we keep the rhythm. The same rhythm. Don't let him go away. Yeah, good. And also, if you maybe a little bit the left leg was a little bit slow. Good. So that's better. And you know, this is a little bit like we play with. Oh, he's not allowed to do that. Quicker. Leg. One time leg really forward, 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 forward. So, you know, then it's better one time to give the leg one time and say, okay, come on, do something. Yeah, that's better. Good. 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 So. So. Good, much better, huh? And oh, don't let him go away. I want to be able to like make it a little bit like quick for the leg, but without going away on the hand. Good, and trot again. And then do one time extend the trot and passage, and then it's enough. Good, into the hand. Good, that's good. I will never forget. I saw Edward do that one time in Windsor with Tontelas, and I have that in my eyes. Every day when I ride, I think, because I've never seen a horse uh, trot like he did on one short side. He, was, he gave it a push with the leg and the horse was like, Shko! And I was like, okay, that's what I want to do. <laughs> good, that's good. Keep the contact. And then back to Passage. So that you can like work like with the, with the steps. Good. That was a good one. That's a good one. Super. That's really good. Really good. So really good. And that helped him a bit now. I rode him a bit forward again and then he actually good. And trot again. Don't do PF all the time. So good. And leg. Check. Check. Yeah. And back. But still keep the rhythm. Same rhythm. And back to passage. Yeah. Good. And trot again. Good. That was a really good one. Super. Okay. And put him down a bit. Good. You know, this is like. Okay, you have more talented horses like this, and you have horses that it takes longer time with. But I think, I think what what I have learned at least is that you have to have a lot of patience. <laughs> when I was younger, I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. but now I just like, yeah, whatever. You know, you wait and you do it again, and then you find each other. It just takes some horses takes a bit longer time, some horses takes a bit less time. <laughs> and good, so good. But this is one of the nicest horses I've ever educated and sold, I have to say. And then to see my wife do such a good job afterwards is, of course, really cool. Really good, sweetie. <laughs> Are you smiling, huh? Never complimenting that much at all. 